the Bible to the cross from the cross. Every Bible story has three components. First, God's law. Second, God's compassion. Third, God's miracle. Opening your Bible opens miracles. The Bible as one story is holy enough in our lives. Day 130 Job 1-3 A righteous man's suffering. Even when Job had lost everything due to Satan's test, Job trusted God who permitted his suffering. First point. The book of Job is regarded as a scholarly masterpiece. The book of Job records the conversations and arguments that Job had with his three friends. The book can be categorized into three parts. The first is that the sin encompasses the heavens and the earth. The second is that it deals with the topic of human suffering. The third is that it is unraveled through a dialogue in the form of conversations and arguments. The book of Job contains Job's questions and God's questions. In between these questions are some of the best conversations and arguments. Second point, God values not silver or gold, but his servants. God boasted of Job to Satan. Have you considered my servant Job? There is no one on earth like him. He is blameless and upright, a man who fears God and shuns evil. God only referred to a small number of people when calling them his servant. To list them, there was Moses, Caleb, David, Jesus, and also Paul. And there was also Job, whom God referred to as his servant. The story starts with Satan testing Job. The reason Satan tested Job was because God boasted of him. Satan therefore wanted to ruin him. Satan claimed that Job was only righteous because God had blessed him. So God permitted Satan to test Job. Third point, after Job's first test, God was able to boast about Job all the more. Through Satan's first test and Job's confession, we can see how God boasted of him. Satan's test began and Job suddenly heard that the Sabians attacked and that they killed Job's servants and took his auction and donkeys. Next, God's fire killed the sheep and the remaining servants. Third, the Chaldeans came and attacked the camels and the servants. Fourth, a wind came and killed all of Job's children and knocked down Job's entire house. All this was reported in one go. Despite the horror of the situation, Job surprisingly did not curse God, but later made his confession that all belonged to God and it was in his power if he wanted to take them away. Regarding his situation, Job firstly tore his robe and shaved his head. Then he fell to the ground in worship and said that the Lord gave him everything, and so the Lord had the right to take it away from him. Job did not resent or curse God in all of this. Fourth point, after Job's second test, his wife leaves him and his three friends come to him. The first test for Job was excruciatingly painful and difficult, but God gave him another test. The second test began with God praising Job in front of Satan for passing the first test. At this, Satan said that Job was yet to fail as his healthy was still with him, God permitted Satan to go ahead and strike the second exam. And so began the second test. Satan hit Job's body with painful sores so hard. 
that he took a piece of a broken pottery to scratch his skin. It was so bad that it made Job an identifiable. However, Job still did not curse or resent God. Things became so bad that Job's wife left him. It was then that his three friends appeared. Fifth point. The debate between Job and his friends began. Job's friends came, but they were unable to speak for seven days because of the shock. When they saw him from a distance, they could hardly recognize him. But they began to weep aloud, and they tore their robes and sprinkled dust on their heads. Then they sat on the ground with him for seven days and seven nights. No one said a word to him because they saw how great his suffering was. Job's three friends were Eliphaz, Bildad, and Jophah. After seven days passed, Job said three things. First, he cursed the day that he was born. Second, he said he desired death. Third, he wanted to know why God had brought about such distress on him. Job asks God to end his life and thus end his suffering. I am thrilled that you have downloaded the Tondoc app. The Tondoc app is not like any other app in the world today as well as in the body of Christ today. Dr. Biyongo Zhou has devoted his entire life to teaching men and women like yourself to understand the entirety of the Word of God as a masterful and beautiful story from Genesis to Revelation. Dr. Zhou is a sought-after speaker worldwide. He's a cutting-edge pastor and leader. He is a renowned theologian and a prolific writer. And you're going to be equipped and energized like never before to understand and apply the Word of God into your life. Again, thank you for downloading the Tondoc app.